Welcome back. We have 11 games on Saturday in the National Hockey League, including Winnipeg and Minnesota, which I feel sad about because Yvonne's off for the weekend with Adelaide at a Girl Guide camp, so she's not going to get to see it. So it, it, it just, it's jinxed. Every game on the board, when it's Winnipeg and Minnesota playing against each other, her favorite games of the year, she's been busy. She hasn't seen it. So we start off at 1 o'clock p.m., Eastern, which is 10 a.m. Pacific, and it is a pretty important game. Uh, more important, I think, for Pittsburgh than Tampa Bay, but Tampa Bay probably has their eyes set on moving up. Maybe we'll get a battle of Florida in the first round. So it is Tampa Bay. It is Pittsburgh. November 30th, Pittsburgh wins 4-2. to two. Uh, December 8th, Tampa Bay wins 3-1. to one. So for Tampa Bay, they're 43-26-7 overall. They are 10 points clear of Philadelphia who are currently the number two wild card. You can see the faith I have in Philadelphia holding on to that. Kucherov, since the 1st of March, so I decided to go from the 1st of March until now. Uh, Kucherov, the leading scorer for Tampa, no surprise there. 14 games, 5 goals, 24 assists, 29 points. Anthony Duclair has been a really solid addition for them in 12 games, 5 goals, 5 assists, 10 points. For Pittsburgh, they're 35, 30, and 11, and they are two points back of the Philadelphia Flyers, so they can do themselves a bit of a favor with a win here. Uh, Crosby, the leading scorer since the 1st of March, they've played 19 games. They've played a lot of hockey. Seven goals, 15 assists, 22 points. Lars Eller's been really strong for them lately. 19 games, four goals, five assists, nine points. Then we fast forward two and a half hours at 12.30 p.m. Pacific, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. We have two games starting then, and then half an hour later, the next game starting. So I will be able to review this one on its own, and these three I'm hoping to get reviewed before the seven o'clock starts get going, but there's only three of them, so I may miss a few minutes of a game here and there. I'm not overly concerned. 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, we have the Florida Panthers and the Boston Bruins. Interestingly enough, Boston, after getting eliminated by Florida last year in the playoffs, have owned them in the regular season this year. October 30th, a three to two overtime win. November 22nd, a three to one win. Most recently, a four to three win in Florida on March 26th. And what does this mean for the playoffs? Nothing, it means absolutely nothing. Uh, Florida 48, 24, and 5. We've seen that before. Teams can own one another in the regular season and playoffs. It's a whole other beast. So for Florida, they're six points clear of the Toronto Maple Leafs in second spot in that division. For Boston, they're four points clear of Florida in the top spot. Uh, Reinhardt, the leading scorer for Florida since March the 1st, 17 games, 12 goals, 6 assists, 18 points. It's been a dry spell for OEL goal scoring wise. He just has five assists in the 17 games he's played in that time period. For Boston, they're 45, 17, and 15 overall. As mentioned, they're four points clear of Florida in first place. Pasternak, their leading scorer over this time from March the 1st until now, because of course he has 16 games, 9 goals, 10 assists, 19 points. Fredericks hit a bit of a rough patch. 16 games, just 2 goals, 2 assists, 4 points for him. Also at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific, the Dallas Stars and the Chicago Blackhawks start things up again. Dallas has won all three meetings here. Uh, no reason to think they won't win this one, but we'll see. Uh, December 29th, a 5-4 to four overtime win for Dallas. December 31st, an 8-1 to one win for Dallas. January 13th, a 3-1 to one win for Dallas. Uh, the Stars are 48-19-9. and nine. Uh, Edmonton did them a favor tonight by beating Colorado, so they're still three points clear of Colorado, and this is their game in hand on the Avs. Jamie Benn's been their leading scorer since March the 1st. 14 games, 10 goals, 10 assists, 20 points. Uh, Craig Smith's been better lately. 13 games, 3 goals, 5 assists, 8 points for him over that same time period. Chicago, 22, 48, and 5. And the biggest benefactor of the return of Connor Bedard has been Kershev. Their leading scorer over the last uh, little while here. 15 games, 7 goals, 11 assists, 18 points since the 1st of March. Taylor Radish, a bit of a bit of a, an issue for him getting goals. He just has three assists in the 15 games he's played since March the 1st. 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific, we have the Winnipeg Jets and the Minnesota Wild. And this is another series where we're looking at potential four-game sweep uh, as we've got Winnipeg winning the first three games. December 30th, 4-2. December 31st, 3-2. And February 20th by a score of 6-3. And it'll be interesting to see if Minnesota, now that they're basically out of it, uh, are they, they going to have a letdown, or will they try to play spoiler? Uh, for Winnipeg, they're 46-24-6 and six overall. They are four points back of Colorado, so Edmonton did the Winnipeg a favor tonight as well. Uh, Josh Morrissey, 18 games, 2 goals, 15 assists, 17 points. Has been their leading scorer since March the 1st. Cole Perfetti's been better lately. 10 games, 3 goals, 3 assists, 6 points for him. On the Minnesota side, they're 36-30-9 and nine overall. They're 10 points back of the LA Kings in that final playoff spot, so not going to happen. 
Uh, Kaprizov, 15 games, 11 goals, 10 assists, 21 points as their leading scorer since March 1st. Mason Shaw's had a tougher time of it, but hey, at least he's playing games. 14 games, 1 goal, 2 assists, 3 points for Shaw. And then at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, we have the St. Louis Blues and the San Jose Sharks. We might be looking at a sweep for the Sharks. So just think about it. If St. Louis had beaten the Sharks both times, they would be three points back of L.A. Heartbreaking, right? San Jose wins 5-1 to one, November 16th. March 30th, they won 4 nothing. So now San Jose's at home. We'll see what happens. St. Louis is 40-32-4 overall. They're seven points back of L.A. in that final playoff spot. Brandon Saad, their leading scorer since March 1st. March 1st. 17 games, 9 goals, 5 assists, 14 points. Uh, been a tougher time for Thomas. Uh, 17 games, 3 goals, 4 assists, 7 points. Tougher time for Thomas. Have no problem spitting that out. Uh, San Jose, 17, 50, and 8 overall. Grandland, 17 games, 5 goals, 12 assists, 17 points for him. He is their leading scorer uh, since March the 1st. Kalen Addison, a bit of a tough time for Addison. 3 assists in 17 games and a minus 13. Um, somewhere Dean Addison's going damn straight. Uh, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. We have three games starting then, beginning with Philadelphia and Columbus. Philadelphia's won two of the first three. Uh, October, four, October 12th by a score of 4-2. to November 19th by a score of 5-2. to And most recently on January 4th, it was a 3-2 to shootout victory for Columbus. Uh, Philadelphia doing their best to miss the playoffs. They're 36-30-11 and 11 overall. Tippett, their leading scorer since March the 1st. 17 games, 7 goals, 8 assists, 15 points. Noah Cates, 16 games, 2 goals, an assist for 3 points over that same time. Uh, for Columbus, 25, 39, and 12 overall. Zach Wierenski's been their leading scorer since the 1st of March. 17 games, 3 goals, 12 assists, 15 points. Wierenski's pretty darn good. Uh, Voronkov had a goal in their last game. We'll see if he can pick up another one. He has 17 games, 2 goals, 1 assist, 3 points. He still has a shot at 20 goals this year. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific start between Montreal and Toronto. Toronto can get the season sweep if they win this one. 6-5 uh, to five shootout victory on October 11th and a 3-2 to two win on March the 9th. So they've both been close, but Toronto's won both. The Leafs are 43-23-9 overall. They're only two points clear of Tampa Bay. By the time they get their game started, they'll know if they're tied with Tampa Bay. Uh, Matthews are leading scorer since the 1st of March. 16 games, 10 goals, 11 assists, 21 points. Uh, Robertson is a goal scorer. 10 games, 4 goals, 1 assist, 5 points. If, tr if Toronto ever decides they want to trade Robertson, I, I think Dallas would enjoy putting those two together. Uh, for Montreal, they're 29, 34, and 12, and I'm not trying to suggest that they will trade him. Just if they wanted to, sure, Dallas will take him. So for Montreal, they're 29, 34, and 12 record. Uh, I saw a comment asking how can they be mathematically eliminated when they have there's enough points for them to catch up. Because teams that they're chasing are going to play against each other, it's guaranteed they're not going to make it. Uh, Suzuki, their leading scorer since the 1st of March, 15 games, 8 goals, 5 assists, 13 points. Armia's been very good lately, 15 games, 6 goals, 1 assist, 7 points. Finishing the season strong can be important for a player trying to keep their job next season. 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific start between New Jersey and the Ottawa Senators as well. Uh, they've split the first two meetings. December 29th was a score of 6-2 for New Jersey. March 23rd, a 5-2 win for Ottawa. New Jersey's 36-36-4. and four. Uh, They're seven points back of Philadelphia, but they have never met a bullet they can't put in their foot as well. Uh, Meyer, 17 games, four goals, eight assists, 22 points to lead them in scoring since March the 1st. Dawson Mercer has had a tough year offensively. 17 games, three goals, one assist, four points. The talent's still there. I think he bounces back next year. And there are some guys in New Jersey who should be able to bounce back next year. Ottawa's 33-38-4. and four. Uh, Matthew, or Brady Kachuk's their leading scorer since the 1st of March. It'd be remarkable if Matthew Kachuk was their leading scorer. Uh, 17 games, 7 goals, 9 assists, 16 points for Brady. Uh, Giroux has had a tough time, honestly. Uh, Scoring-wise, 18 games, 2 goals, 6 assists, 8 points since the 1st of March. And so I'm wondering, is this where we see Giroux's point total start to slide off a bit? Because that happens. Players reach age 35 around that area, and scoring suddenly becomes a problem. 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific start between Nashville and the New York Islanders. Nashville won the first meeting January 13th, 3-1. to For the Preds, they're 44-28-4. They're only one point clear of LA in that first wildcard spot. Uh, they're sitting well back of the Jets. I don't think they catch the Jets. Forsberg, 15 games, 14 goals, 12 assists, 26 points. has been fantastic throughout March and now into April. Uh, Sissons, just four assists in 15 games over that time. He's due for a goal. He's been all around it. Uh, for the Islanders, they're 34, 27, and 15. They are third, but they're tied with Philadelphia. They have played one less game than Philadelphia. I don't think they have the regulation wins tiebreak on anybody 
that they're in the race with, so they, they need to get more points. They need to make sure they finish ahead. They don't have the tiebreaker. Uh, Horvat, their leading scorer since March 1st, 17 games, 9 goals, 7 assists for 16 points for him. Sezikis in those same 17 games, 1 goal, 5 assists, 6 points, but prominent in their last game. We'll see if he gets one here. And then at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. So there's a 2.5 hour separation between this start time and this start time. Honestly, this is one of the easiest Saturdays I've had. My wife's not here, so... Saturday night where I'd probably be done relatively early and I could hang out with her and here we are. Uh, so the Oilers and the Flames, the Battle of Alberta. This should be fun. Uh, the Oilers have won two of the first three, so they're trying to win the season series. October 29th in the Heritage Classic, they won 5-2. to two. January 20th, they won 3-1. to one. February 24th, Calgary won 6-3. to three. Will they win the Heritage or will they wear the Heritage Classics jerseys again? I think they have in every matchup they've had. I don't see any reason why they wouldn't. Uh, the Oilers 46, 24, and 5 overall. They're five points clear of Vegas because Vegas lost tonight against Arizona. McDavid, their leading scorer since March the 1st, 18 games, 9 goals, 25 assists, 34 points. So that three way race for the Art Ross. I mean, Kucherov's going to win it, but at least it's going to be close. At least I think Kucherov wins it. Ekholm, 17 games since March 1st, 6 goals, 12 assists, 18 points. He's nearing career highs. So for Ekholm, it's been a remarkable season for him. Uh, Calgary 34, 36, and 5 overall. Sharon Govich, your leading scorer since March 1st. 16 games, 8 goals, 7 assists, 15 points for Sharon Govich. Uh, Miramanov has definitely enjoyed himself, I think, more in Calgary than Vegas. You have to wonder if Miramanov had been with a team that would give him that ice time, where would he be right now? 13 games, 3 goals, 2 assists, 5 points since joining the uh, Calgary Flames. 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific start between Vancouver and LA. So the home team has lost every game this year. Uh, February 29th, LA wins 5-1 to one in Vancouver. March the 5th, Vancouver wins in LA 2-1 to one in overtime. And March 25th, LA wins 3-2 to two in Vancouver. Meaning, if these teams meet in the first round, Vancouver with home ice advantage is not an advantage. Vancouver 47-21-8. Just remember what I said at the start, though. The regular season doesn't matter. Um, once the matchups are decided, you never know. But for the Vancouver Canucks, they're five points clear of Edmonton atop the division. Uh... Quinn Hughes, 14 games, 4 goals, 12 assists, 16 points, has been their leading scorer since March the 1st. And yes, if he does not win the Norris Trophy, some Canuck fans are not going to be happy. Uh, Hronik, 3 assists in 14 games. Hronik's games picked up lately, uh, which is good because he, he did need to get a little bit better than where he was playing. For LA, they're 40, 25, and 11 overall. They're 7 points clear of St. Louis. So if St. Louis loses to San Jose, which happens... And if LA beats Vancouver, which happens, that would basically end the races in the West. Uh, Kempe, their leading scorer since March the 1st, 14 games, 6 goals, 11 assists, 17 points. Watch for Akil Thomas. Very impressive in the two games he's played since the call-up. He had a goal in their last game. Will he get another one tomorrow? We shall see. Let me know your picks in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Uh, we have one more Saturday after this one. And then we're into the playoffs. So it's an exciting time of year. And uh, we'll see how these teams jockey for position uh, in Saturday's games. Thank you guys so much for all your support as always. I will talk to you again soon.